before we call the meeting to order, uh, we did have to submit a plan to be able to have this in-person meeting. Uh, the plan was approved for a maximum of 20 people in the room. And uh, tonight, uh, put our personal feelings aside, masks are required. That's the only way we can have in-person meetings of the Quorum Court and City Councils. The, they came back later, they issued another bulk directive for all City Councils and Quorum Courts. And uh, your meeting room space divided by 36 is your maximum occupancy. Masks are required, you get to, uh, get to enjoy an, an in-person meeting. And I appreciate y'all doing this because I just think in-person meetings are so much more effective than trying to Zoom or a conference call uh, something of this nature. So we'll go ahead and call the meeting order. All rise, please. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <coughs> Have a seat. Roll call. Oh. Here. Thank you. Here. Sarah. Here. Philip. Here. 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 Uh, you had submitted to you uh, well, the, the agenda, and we have one additional ordinance that was sponsored by Nikki Brown that was added to the agenda. Uh, do I hear a motion to accept that motion additional accept. ordinance? Second. We have a motion by Holt, second by Justice Phillips to accept the addition of one ordinance sponsored by Nikki Brown. Any discussion? All in favor of putting that additional ordinance on the agenda signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Carries. Uh, you had uh, submitted to you via email the minutes from the last meeting. Do I hear a motion to approve? Sorry. Motion to approve. Have a motion by Phillips, second by Lemmings to uh, approve the minutes. Any discussion? All those in favor of approving the minutes signify by saying aye. Uh, any opposed? Uh, treasurer's report. Do I hear a motion to approve the treasurer's report? Make a motion. Second. Motion by Nikki Brown, second by Justice Hensley to approve the treasurer's report. Any discussion? Question. Yes. Sir. Uh, on uh, civil conservation and the Beverly County Aging Program, why are they in the red? When we do the final settlement, Usually at the end of the year, soil conservation is always in the minus, okay. um, and the aging program is going to be that way too. I'm assuming it's just how the it all divided out at the end of the year. Okay, so we get that money back. Yes. Okay. They they won't get paid until that money is brought back. Yet. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Any more discussion? All in favor of approving the treasurer's report, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? You were emailed the appropriations analysis. Do I hear a motion to approve? So be it. Second. I have a motion by Dale Holt, second by Sarah Brown to approve the appropriation analysis. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? It brings us to the county roads and equipment report. Uh, the freeze thaw cycle has, is taking a toll on the roads. We have graders out, crews working constantly to uh, try to cut out the potholes and smooth them up as best we can. We're trying to spot blade because if we go over a good road, we're just going to make a problem where there isn't one right now. Uh, we'll begin grading end to end again as soon as weather permits. Uh, the Vendor County Road Department celebrates three years of being accident free as of January 17th. Their jobs are dangerous and this is no small accomplishment. There's a resolution in the package that uh, we will discuss later in the meeting. Uh, most of the road crew chose to use their accumulated time off for the holidays and immediately following the two week period of having that small crew, uh, we had a lot of people that were quarantined with COVID-19. So uh, we're slowly starting to recover and get back to almost a full staff. We still have a couple who are out with COVID. Uh, work still continues on the large grant funded projects. Hopefully uh, we can polish off Peyton Mountain within the next couple of weeks. And uh, we're finalizing plans for the 2021 calendar. I fully admit that I got a bit ze zealous with our, our calendar last year 
and uh, we have some a few more projects to carry over. But they're going to be first of the list this year. Any discussion? Any questions? Sheriff, do you have a report for us? I do have, and I apologize I didn't get here early enough to hand these out. So I'm going to go around real quick. If anybody's got any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. Uh, a couple of praises that we have going on is, is we did fill our last remaining deputy slot today uh, with a gentleman from just a little bit west of us, a full-time certified officer. So we will not need to send him to the academy, although we did have one of our former jailers go to the academy this Monday. And so he has begun his long 13 week journey in Pocahontas where there's no wind. <laughs> and uh, there's plenty of trees to block the air. Um, other than that, we were fortunate enough for you guys to vote us in two new positions in the detention facility. As of right now, we're taking applications until January the 29th. We have been blessed with a number of applications. So our process is probably going to be a little bit lengthier to get those two positions filled. Hopefully that's done in February. So um, as of right now, our, our staff is doing well. I uh, believe we have everyone returned to work at this time and everything's going well uh, for right now. Things can change quickly though in our business. So um, anybody's got any questions, be happy to answer. Thank you, Joseph. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to introduce our uh, interim librarian, our interim, what, what's your title? Um, interim director. Thank you. Interim director of the yeah. library. Uh, would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, sure. My name is Augie Bernstein. I'm the interim director of the Van Buren County Library. <laughs> his daughter and I were best friends when we were little. I spent a lot of time at his house shooting basketball. <laughs> so anyway, it's great to be here. Well, good to meet y'all. Be glad to have you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, are there any other uh, county boards that would like to address the court? The court, do you have any questions for any elected officials or any other person that's here in the room? Moving on, next up we have David Deaton with a financial report for Ozark Health. Thanks, sir. <clears throat> well, it's good to see everyone. Lots happened since we saw each other last time. The pandemic, of course, has gotten worse. So I'm going to give you a report, two reports. One is the year-to-date report through the end of November. I don't have December's numbers finalized. They should be in the next day or two. But uh, for the year that ended June uh, 2020, we had a net patient revenue of $28,383,288. With a total operating expenses of $28,936,770. And by the way, I will give this report to the judge and he can get copies to everyone if you want that. We have an operating loss for the year today through the end of ju last June of $553,482. However, that includes depreciation and amortization. And uh, so if you remove that, which is a common accounting, uh, it's called uh, earnings before depreciation and amortization, we showed a, a gain of $922,410. So that's roughly reflective of our cash flow. So we're, we are cash flowing. Our full-time equivalent employees equal 288. That was down from the prior year, uh, about 10 from the prior year. And we have about 340, roughly 340 employees on payroll at any given time. But if everyone worked 40 hours a week, that would equal 288 full-time. Our total wages and benefits last year was uh, combined $16,398,628. That's up less than 1% from the prior year. Hospital average daily census last year through the end of June was 11. 
that was down two from the prior year. That's about 15%. Average nursing home, average daily census last year through June was 77. That was up 4% from the prior year, or I'm sorry, up 5% from the prior year. If you recall, we had a flood that affected large portions of the nursing home. We had to do major repairs. Uh, combined between our loss of business that year of that flood and the total repair cost, that was about a $2.2 million uh, insurance claim. We were on our way of building up our census when the pandemic occurred this past spring. So, uh, but we did end the year up 5% from the prior year. Number of home health visits was 17,764. That was down about 11% from the prior year. Emergency department visits, um, we had a total of 7,295 emergency department visits. That was down about 3% from the prior year. When the pandemic began about uh, March, April, May, and June, we saw a significant decline in our business. Prior to that, uh, we were up compared to the prior year. But on many of these uh, numbers, we wound up down because of what occurred uh, in the last uh, three months of the fiscal year. I'm happy to say that our door to discharge times in our emergency department last year um, was the lowest it had been ever at Ozark Health. 107 minutes, that's from the time a patient arrived to the time they're discharged home. And so uh, we continue to work on that, continue to work on our service, make sure our patients get tended to quickly. And while it's not always perfect, I think we're just continually getting better. Uh, our transfer percentage when patients came to our ER last year was 12%. So 88% or slightly above 88% of all the patients that arrived in our emergency department actually received all of their care at Ozark Health. So we did transfer out uh, approximately 12%. So those are the year-to-date numbers uh, as of the end of last June. Uh, our fiscal year, of course, is July 1 through June 30. And so year-to-date through the end of November, uh, the net patient revenue, and this is a monthly average, it's $2,437,414. That's up about 3% from the year I just described that we just ended in June last year. So our revenues uh, through the end of November were up about 3%. Operating expenses, unfortunately, were up about 8%. Of course, we had a lot of extra expenses when it comes to supply costs, uh, overtime and all those things that occur when you have a, a crisis going on and um, it's difficult to keep uh, health care staff sometimes especially when you have folks that are out quarantined or maybe even uh, have the COVID itself so when you look at our uh, year-to-day revenue and expenses uh, we're not doing as well as we were last year so just to summarize year-to-date through November revenue net revenue is up three percent Operating expenses are up 8%. Uh, our FTEs are roughly the same as they were this time last year. So 288, that's where, that's where we're trending is our uh, employment appears to be remaining about the same. The total number of hours. Now, we've had a lot more overtime hours um, in the last several months. And so uh, we've seen our wages and benefits go up about 6%. Of course, you know, time and a half is what a overtime hour requires. Uh, wages and benefits, as I mentioned, combined up about 6% from a year ago. The average census at our hospital between July and November were roughly the same as they were last year at 11. The nursing home average daily census, however, had declined about 2%. Uh, over since the pandemic occurred, there's been very limited ability to visit residents in nursing homes, and so <laughs> residents uh, many times are just hesitant to be admitted to the nursing home. And so I think most nursing homes have seen their uh, <coughs> admissions decline during the pandemic. So uh, we've held fairly steady, but we are down about, uh, running about 75 year to date through the end of November. Our home health visits are running down about three less per month than they did last year. So they, they've been running about 1,483 visits per month. So we're down less than 1% on our home health visits compared to a year ago. 
emergency department visits are down compared to the same time last year, about 3%. Uh, we're averaging uh, July through November, 589 emergency department visits. Our average door to discharge time and number of minutes uh, actually had went from 107 minutes last year to 106. So we, we have continued to provide good and efficient service to uh, our emergency department uh, visitors and patients. Our transfer percentage um, actually has declined from 12% to about 11%. So we're actually, even though the total number are down slightly in the emergency department, uh, we're actually seeing uh, a smaller percentage uh, need to be transferred to other hospitals so we're able to, uh, to care for those folks. So that's sort of where we are financially and business volume wise. Uh, I do want to talk a little bit about uh, just where we are on the COVID, the pandemic. But before I do that, I want to recognize uh, we had two employees that were recognized at Ozark, as Ozark Health heroes. Uh, we do not have employees of the year, we have heroes of the year. So we recognized and we're proud to recognize Billy Duncan. She works in our laboratory. Uh, she's one of the main uh, lab techs that goes out and actually conducts the COVID test. So if you or someone you know has come to the hospital and we have a process where you, you don't come in the hospital uh, to get your routine COVID test. Uh, Billy uh, has probably done more of those than any other uh, lab personnel. She dresses out and does that. So we were very pleased to award her uh, as one of our 2020 Ozark Health employees, uh, oh, I'm sorry, Heroes of the Year. Robert Wilder was another Ozark Health Hero of the Year. He works in environmental services and helps make sure that the floors that the place looks clean and uh, people will, will tell you that we do have one of the cleaner facilities and that's because of the hard work of the environmental staff. Uh, but more specifically, Robert has really done a great job. So any of you that know Robert, um, congratulate him if you would. So just for a brief COVID update, uh, so far during the pandemic, Ozark Health has been very fortunate in that we've only had one COVID death of a patient in our hospital. Um, it's sad that that happened, and it, and it happened just recently, actually. Uh, during the course of the pandemic, we've, uh, we've had 25 pa of our patients in the hospital that were COVID positive. Uh, some of those folks, we continued their entire care at our hospital, and some we transfer if they require pulmonology or more um, ICU top level care. Uh, I'm unaware, uh, I'm not saying it didn't happen, but I'm unaware that we've had anybody in our hospital for any length of time that was on a ventilator because of COVID. But we do have ventilators available uh, in case that's needed. We've been very fortunate. We have never run out of critical equipment or supplies or pharmaceuticals. Um, we've been very blessed in that respect. We have been affected as an employer. Uh, um, We've had 37 of our employees have COVID that have recovered. We have two employees that are, that are currently, uh, that are active COVID as we speak. And so uh, we, we've had some of our employees and our uh, hospital family uh, very affected by it, very sick in the hospital. We had one, one of our uh, folks that just uh, was in the hospital more than three weeks, very sick with it. But we're very fortunate. Uh, as far as the total number of patients in our hospital at any one time that had COVID, we had as many as four at a time. And of course, we don't have an ICU, but we have uh, many of our rooms are negative air pressure, which means that's one of the requirements to have people with infectious diseases. And so we're very well equipped to take care of those if we need to do that. And we were, at one time, we had as many as four at any given time. Again, the staff did a wonderful job. We have tested so far since the pandemic began uh, 2,520, and that was as of a couple of days ago. So we've, we've tested more than 2,500 uh, people at Ozark Health. Just this month alone, we've tested uh, 343 COVID tests. Presently, we have about 600 test, te test kits available. So we are in a good position to be able to offer the test uh, we're not in danger at this time of running out of test kits. There was a time or two that it didn't run pretty close. 
And we had to limit it to more serious cases, but uh, that's not been for a while. As far as vaccines go, hospitals in Arkansas uh, were the first group that, was that the vaccine was made available to. The Pfizer vaccine was made available to hospitals around the state of Arkansas. We received uh, enough doses that we immunized uh, 88 people at Ozark Health Medical Center with the Pfizer vaccine. Um, nursing home employees and residents were covered under another vaccine that I'll talk about in just a moment. But uh, once we uh, ensured that all of our frontline employees at the hospital had access to the vaccine, a number of those declined to take it. It's not mandatory. Uh, the health department's not made it mandatory, and we have not made it mandatory, although there's some debate as to whether we need to do that. I'm not aware of a hospital that's requiring people to take that, and so we have chosen not to do that. But we do highly encourage it. Uh, but 88 total, and that did include some of the EMS. Uh, I know Fairfield Bay EMS had some folks, and as you know, that's an entirely voluntary EMS service, and it's a lot of retired folks, and many of those folks wanted to take the vaccine if it's available, and so we did make it available to other healthcare professionals once our frontline hospital workers had the opportunity to take it. And so we were pleased to use every uh, dose of vaccine that was made available to us. We did not have any left over after that. We were very pleased to work with Clinton Drug to help issue the Moderna vaccine, which was the second vaccine that was approved by the FDA under an emergency use authorization. And so Clinton Drug uh, helped vaccinate nursing home employees as well as uh, I think 56 nursing home residents chose to be vaccinated. And so about a total of 110 altogether were vaccinated with the Moderna vaccine. And that was with the help of Clinton Drug and those folks over there. So Ozark Health, between the nursing home and the hospital and the nursing home residents and, uh, and some volunteers and people that work regularly in healthcare with us, about 198 total vaccinations that we either did directly or we cooperated with Clinton Drug to help, help done. Uh, I'll end on the note of uh, in Arkansas, presently there's 1140 patients throughout the state that are currently hospitalized with COVID. That's down from a peak of about eight days ago of 1,339. So we're, we, in the last eight days, we have come down um, somewhat. And so we're still in a very uh, dangerous situation, but very pleased with the numbers declining. In Arkansas, there's 358 <laughs> patients in ICU with COVID presently. That's down from a peak of 442. So we're pointing in the right direction um, and, you know, I, I can't even venture to guess as to why that's happening, whether it's the vaccines or whether it's the virus running its course. Nobody knows, I'm sure. And on ventilators throughout the state, 183 patients are on ventilators. That's down from a peak of 252. So we've seen a significant reduction in the number of patients on ventilators with COVID in the state of Arkansas. And so, as I mentioned, uh, Ozark Health has always been in a position of having all the equipment we needed, all the protective gear. Uh, we've not run out of um, uh, pharmaceuticals. Uh, we've received um, some emergency supplies through the Arkansas Emergency and Disaster Preparedness. We're very fortunate to be a part of that group. Um, and so uh, some of that I'm, I'm sure came from the federal government through the state of Arkansas, but we do cooperate and do most of what we're doing in terms of emergency supplies through the Arkansas Department of Health and the emergency preparedness group. Uh, we have uh, also um, antibody therapy. We have given, uh, I think, 11 doses of antibody therapy in the last um, couple of weeks or so. And so we're beginning to see more and more orders for that antibody therapy. Uh, that's a therapy for patients that are not in the hospital. It's, it's a therapy really intended for patients that are outpatients and they're not severely ill with COVID. And what we believe is going on there, it, it can help actually keep them, some folks out of the hospital. So we're in a position to do that. So we be glad to answer any questions that the court has. Do I have any questions for Mr. Deaton? Mm -hmm. 
There, there are certain requirements to make someone eligible to receive that. Um, and I'm not sure all the requirements. One of the requirements is, or it has been in the past, that if you were on oxygen therapy, if you needed oxygen, they, uh, they, you were not a candidate to receive that drug. And I don't know why that is. I think it's something to do with the way the body responds. Uh, uh, maybe similar to something that was going on early in the pandemic. If you remember, a lot of people were on ventilators and a lot of people were dying. Very early on, they, they thought we needed a lot of ventilators. A lot of people were on ventilators when their oxygen levels got low. Well, what we've discovered since is that a better approach is not ventilation, but it's uh, high flow oxygen. And so we had people dying on ventilators, but when we started using fewer ventilators, people tended to do better. And so I think it's something to do with once a patient uh, has a need for supplemental oxygen, that they're just not responding to the antibody therapy. And so they're, I, I don't know if it's, I don't know if they found that it's just not advantageous at all, or maybe there's some disadvantage to it. But that's just one of the requirements I know, is if you have uh, a need for supplemental oxygen, I believe the protocol is not to give you the antibody therapy. And it's actually designed to, for uh, not severely ill patients, I believe. Uh, one more thing. Yes, sir. When are you going to get the general public and people over 70? Okay. Um, you know, I was talking today to find out when we were going to get our, our next doses to be able to administer, and I, I don't have any information on that. I know that as far as uh, I know, uh, Clinton Drug, for example, this week was doing a uh, clinic. I don't know how many doses they had, but uh, they informed us uh, a couple of days ago they were doing a clinic at Clinton Drug. And so people that are wanting to take the vaccine in our area, I think, should contact Clinton Drug. And in Fairfield Bay, uh, Fairfield Bay Pharmacy, I know, was uh, doing some healthcare workers early on, and my guess is that they'll be doing the same thing in Fairfield Bay for people that are 70 and over, and you know, people um, that meet that criteria. So. But I would encourage people to consider taking it when it's available. Uh, once the frontline employees were offered, and if there was any extra, uh, they were offered to people that weren't in frontline positions, such as myself, and once we had enough for everybody else, I chose to take it. And my side effect was I had a sore arm for a couple, three days, uh, kind of achy. But uh, I'm not aware of any serious side effects from either the Pfizer vaccine nor the Moderna. I know there's some folks, maybe they didn't feel well and that kind of thing, but I'm unaware of anything that was serious in nature or that had to be reported to the, uh, to the health department. I was, I was kind of curious, you mentioned that uh, you offer the uh, home health care services, you have the nursing uh, care facility there. How many people uh, do you, uh, are, what's, what's the, uh, maximum holding count for the uh, nursing facility? The nursing home census could be, you know, over 100 total if every okay. room was utilized. Sure, sure, sure. Just you know, I will say too, anytime there's been a suspected uh, COVID case in the nursing home, and by the way, we've had two, and neither one of those patients that I'm aware of were, were, were very sick at all. They had no symptoms other, you know, any symptoms that they didn't have prior. But there's a lot of precautions, and so we, we have to isolate patients. So we do not have full capacity. And uh, today, even if we could admit uh, you know, that many, we probably would want to keep some flexibility for being able to isolate patients uh, as needed. Do you Thank work you. in conjunction? Are there, excuse me, are there, this is actually a financial report. Uh, you're welcome to discuss with Mr. Deaton anything you want after the meeting. But uh, are there any other questions regarding the finances of the hospital? Thank you. Is that just yes. Yes. Public can answer. Yes. Yes. You and the federal records say that reflect that Ozark Health was able to get about two to five million dollars in PPP loans last year. Yes. 
Were you able to get those forgiven, or have you received notice? We have. Those have not been forgiven. That's still considered a loan. Okay. Good. Any other financial questions? Thank you for being here. All right. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, next up, uh, you guys need to decide on a delegate to uh, represent the Corn Court at the Association of Arkansas Counties. So I will just open the floor up. Uh, justices, the floor is yours. Anyone who would like to volunteer to do the job? I'm going to recommend Mary. She's been doing it. I would like to do it, but is there somebody else who would like to do it also? I have been doing it for several years. Anybody else want to change at it? Oh, I don't hear anybody <laughs> just coming. I don't want to get away from you. <laughs> okay, so uh, all any discussion? First of all, uh, do I hear a motion to nominate Mary? I make a motion we nominate Mary. I second. Okay, so we have a motion by Holt and a second by Justice uh, Nikki Brown to uh, nominate Mary Phillips as the Quorum Court Delegate for the Association of Arkansas Counties. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor of Mary Phillips, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Congratulations, Mary. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we need to read into the minutes an acknowledgement of the audit report. <coughs> the legislative audit. Uh, there was one finding, and I spoke to Carol Cruz before the meeting. She said, if you have any questions about that finding, just give her a call at any time. That was the one major finding. Uh, are there any questions as to uh, any of the financial reports in the audit? Okay. Do I hear a motion that we accept the audit? Second. second. Motion by Philip, second by Holt, that we uh, accept and read it to the minutes, the acknowledgement of the audit. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Or any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. That brings us up to new business, and our first ordinance is sponsored by Justice Holt. Peter ordained by the Quorum Court of the County of Van Buren, State of Arkansas, an ordinance be entitled An Emergency Ordinance to Address Leave Policies in Times of a Public Health Emergency declared, declared by the Governor of the State of Arkansas. Whereas Governor Asa Hutchinson has declared a public health emergency due to the COVID-19 virus entering Arkansas. Whereas quarantine is one of the recommended management tools by the CDC to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Whereas the quarantine period recommended by the CDC varies from the times of exposure. Whereas it is in the best interest of the county, its employees, and the public that persons who have been exposed to COVID-19 or have been diagnosed with COVID-19 be able to remain in quarantine for the recommended period. Whereas the county is attempting to ensure employees are able to remain in quarantine for the recommended period, or are able to remain in quarantine after having a confirmed case of COVID-19 without suffering undue hardship, which may be created by limited ability of leave. Now, therefore, during the state of public health emergency declared by the governor due to COVID-19, the following rules will be in place. Employees who are placed on quarantine either by their physician or by their elected official shall be paid for the quarantine period up to 14 days. This pay time shall not be taken out of any leave bank of the employee. For physical imposed quarantine, the employee must provide documentation from the doctor's office. The elected official may use their discretion to identify an employee subject to quarantine based on identified risk factors as explained by the CDC or based on fact-specific information related to travel locations or high-risk transmission settings or personal contact with a presumptive case of COVID-19. Employees who are diagnosed with COVID-19 shall not return to work until the suggested quarantine has been fulfilled. A medical release shall be required from the physician or physician's office who originally diagnosed the employee. An employee who has been diagnosed with COVID-19 shall be paid up to 14 days from the date of diagnosis or until they are released to return to work. This paid time shall not be taken out of any leave bank of the employee. 
employees who do not qualify for sections two or three of this ordinance, but who have a school age child who has experienced a school closing or mandatory quarantine may choose to stay home with their child without being subject to discipline for attendance. Employees who choose to stay home under this option are required to use any accrued paid time off, including sick leave, vacation leave, comp time, and personal time. Once paid time off has been exhausted, the employee may refer to the catastrophic leave bank policy. Unused leave time through this COVID-19 ordinance shall not convey to the catastrophic leave fund. Five, employees who choose to take time off during this declared public health emergency for any other uh, than those listed above are still subject to regular leave provisions as outlined in the county personnel policy. Employees who have sustained payments from their accrued personnel leave time for quarantine shall be reversed to, to January 1st, 2021. Employees of the central positions may be asked to continue to work until a positive test is presented. This is eight. The emergency clause. There is significant risk to the public health and safety posted by spread of COVID-19. The Van Buren County Forum Court has determined that this ordinance is necessary to help prevent the spread of the illness within the county and to members of the general public who visit county offices. Therefore, an emergency is hereby declared to exist and this ordinance being necessary for the preservation of public health, safety and welfare shall be affected from and after its date of passage. I move we pass the court. We have a motion to approve by Holt and a second by Mary Phillips. Discussion? Or questions? Yes. Chair, have you got a question? I, I do have a couple of questions uh, just to clarify. As, as we all know, our budgets have been approved um, in December for 2021. So if somebody requires time off and they take the amount of time off, then where is that money going to come from? Are we going to be reimbursed for that from somewhere, from the state, federal level? Do we know? There are no more reimbursements unless there is some more CARES Act money that comes down. Right. Uh, that's why we, were, we, we weren't covered after December Correct. 31st. Uh, what this does, it just diverts back to we're losing productivity. We're not really losing money because they're getting paid just like they were here. So it comes out of our existing budget. Great. But it's going to come out of each individual budget. Yes. Okay. Well, I guess the disagreement that I have with it is because if, if I pay them to be off on COVID leave for two weeks or however many weeks, because we don't have a specification here, how many times they can do it. Then they come back and they take their vacation that they've accrued and they take their comp time. I'm literally paying them for more than my personal services have allotted me this year. Right. You uh, and this ordinance gives the elected official the uh, ability to, uh, especially in uh, sensitive departments like yours. Uh, what is it? It's called a. Uh, Infra critical infrastructure department. Residual. Right, for okay. essential personnel. You can keep them working until they test positive. <coughs> and they must provide documentation from the doctor's office that they are. Right. I'm totally for so, helping them pull right. out. My problem is, is when I come up in the red at the end of the year, then it becomes, then it becomes my problem. And then y'all are asking me. You're going to be, you be in the red when you have to hire someone to replace that individual, and we, then I can then I can move into part time money. I can I can substantiate you know I can substantiate that. But with full time employees, if I allow them to be off the COVID time, which I have no problem with, but then they also have additional three weeks vacation because we do have people who've been there long enough to have three weeks vacation. Then they, you know, we, we let them carry over up to 120 hours comp time and they start taking all that off. We don't specify, you know, in the CARES Act, they could, we can pay them up to 80 hours one time. We don't have any specifications here. They can take off 80 hours. Two weeks later, they can take off 80 more hours. Two weeks later, they can take off 80 more hours, plus their 120 hours comp time, plus their 120 hours vacation. If I have 
can employees do that, I'm thousands of dollars in the hole. Well, they can't do that without, I mean, they got to have documentation from the position, correct? Who can't go to the position and get documentation around here? Positive test. <laughs> Well, yeah, but you're going to continue to test positive even after you've had it in quarantine. You still test positive a month later. By, by ADH guidelines, you are not subject to a quarantine for 90 days after a positive test. So that gives us a little bit of... Correct. It gives me a little bit. Right. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of loopholes. I, I see what you're saying. My mm -hmm. only issue is when my budget's in the red, Y'all are not going to ask me the questions of who took off how many times. Y'all are going to say, Sheriff, why are you in the red? And it's, it's my budget. I, I want the people to be off if they need to be off. That's not a problem. But I, I think we need a little bit different wording in here to kind of protect our elected officials and our budget. Like he said, I think the production is what's going to take the hit, not the budget. Was this written by the ARC, or where did we get this? Or it was written it was by uh, uh, Brandy McAllister. Oh, if you're going to have to pay somebody to be off, plus mm -hmm. pay somebody to do their job. The sheriff's in a unique position here because he can't just yeah. not yeah. have yeah. this yeah. 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 Right. Mm -hmm. And my yeah. question was how many times can they say, well, I was exposed, so I need to point him? I mean, like, not, not that anybody would do that, but. I mean, that's <laughs> we we had that. We yeah, who's to say that that won't happen? And you have to pay them. Do you have to pay them every night? I mean, I, I understand the that, that's positive where, test. Sure, that's where the elected official has to step up and say, "You've already re said you've been exposed twice. I need to see a positive test." Well, I I understand Lucas's concern, especially with his situation and what Pam said, that's a very valid point. Because he can't he can't afford to pay the person that's off and then the person to fill in for them however many times. So there may need to be some kind of clause put in there for I mean I can't leave a dispatcher's chair empty for a day. That's my only thing. I there has to be somebody out in line this year. Brian uh <coughs> Brian and I talked about this, and he has concerns about this. Uh, he wanted to make a recommendation that we table this and bring it before the committee, the budget committee, so we can go over this again and see if, if we can tweak it better okay. uh, to make it best for your office. Or somehow, I don't know what kind of wording we put in it. And, it, and, the, and I may, I may need to do something specifically just for my office. I don't yeah. know, and I'm, I'm open for a suggestion on that. I don't and, mind doing it. And I'm not wanting to tell this to put it off because it's, it's a very important thing to do. But right. if we if we pass this, we're going to live with what, what it is right now. And it doesn't talk about your office. I'm open for suggestions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I do think there needs to be something in there. I mean. I understand the elected official has to step up, but there are cases where people are exposed multiple times. I mean, they may have a lot of kids. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know what But I do think people need to be paid. I mean, it's not their fault that they're sick. Mm -hmm. I have one who has four kids, and he's been quarantined four times. And that's totally not their fault. So I don't know. I don't know I'm conflicted because, obviously, in some ways, this is time sensitive. Yes. Um, I hope we're on, I mean, based on what Mr. D, maybe we're starting to go down, but I don't think any of us know that. Lucas has brought some very valid concerns, um, mostly specific to kids. Yes. Um, and so I know we have to live by what we approve. I, I'm just, I'm trying to think it through. I'm conflicted. Is there some way that would well, it be there, fair to exclude a department in this initial one and then figure it out for a department, or is that just a horrible idea? I don't Well, there's people out there exposed anywhere. What, we got the people that are exposed to work. If they're, if they're work, they're work. I mean, I have an employee at this very time that's very dependent on this being passed, but. 
an overall outlook for our, our county and our financial standpoint as a sheriff's office, uh, I got to ask the question. If we well, were to table this, do we have to wait till the next month? Yeah. Now, one thing we can do is, I'm going to check me if I'm wrong, we can pass this ordinance tonight, but we can come back and revisit this ordinance and add extensions to this ordinance. You can come back next yeah. month and repeal it. Yeah, we can repeal ordinance. this and we can repeal it next month and then come back and have it maybe better written for the sheriff's office. So if we passed it, it would cover us until... It would cover us until we come back next month. And then we could have a budget meeting. We could have a budget meeting between then and there. Next month. And, uh, and see how we can word something for the sheriff's office. I mean, with us five, we should be able to come up with some sort of like Plus the sheriff, we would want you there uh, to come up with something that would help you too. Can you not amend this one? Instead of having two or three different ordinances for each office? Yeah, we can, this well, one. yeah we can amend this yeah, right now. Yeah, we can put a different section in there, but we'd have to figure out how we're going to word it. Yeah, we'd have to figure out how to word it. That's good. I mean, somebody's I got mean, a quick thing I, on top of their head, do it. I, I think it's a complicated... I like the I, I like something in place because we're in the hype of this. I think these are valid questions, and it may just take two two turns at it. But at least we're covered. I mean, we put something in place in the hype of this that I mean, we can make. We're going into this knowing that we're probably going to make some amendments, but it's limiting our. I don't know. I think the timing is kind of now, but I, you know, I'm just talking out loud. I, I agree with maybe putting this in place for 30 days and saying we we look at changing this, but I would like to hear all opinions on it. Yeah, well, the health of our personnel is the most important thing. So I say for tonight we'll go ahead and pass this. We revisit it next month. Have a meeting with with the finance committee, budget committee. Let's work it over. See if we can uh, amend it. And then have an amendment for next week. I agree, so it doesn't so, hold up everybody else. Yes, sir. Are you uh, dealing with COVID in the jail right now? Yes, sir. I understand there's quite a few, right? They come out of quarantine today. Yes, sir. So if we pass this tonight, it'll back up and reimburse the people of, well, Exposed at work, that's why I keep talking over it. Maybe they came to work. Well, the employees just came to work and have to be exposed. So we pass this now. The ones but, back, back to January the 1st, we'll have to reimburse all of them. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, it's already in the budget for their salary, correct? So you're not, we're, we're not losing any money. The money was already going to be paid to them. Am I understanding that correctly? Right, except mm -hmm. if there is a situation like, say, the sheriff, mm -hmm. where he has to pay someone on top right. of someone else. Exactly. Up until this point, for the elected officials, reimbursing back to January 1st, do you think that this is a would be a major issue for your budget? This was passed tonight, knowing that this would reimburse until January 1st. Is that a big a concern? No, I, I'm for I'm totally for that it's just the possibility for continuously being quarantined and then you continuously having to fill in that's going to run into my money budget let's take this in consideration a sundown a sundown date on this ordinance yeah, yeah. yeah. that's the next one for it yeah all right let's, 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 let's put that sundown in here is that what you said that's fine to expire next month? Yeah. When we put another one in place. The next quorum court date will be February 18th. Okay. We can make that, Pam, can we make that number nine under the emergency clause? Ordinance expires February 18th, 2021. Yes. Okay. Is that a motion to amend? I'll make a motion to amend now. Second. 
We have a motion and a second, a motion by Holt, a second by Phillips to amend this ordinance to add number nine. This ordinance expires February 18th, 2021. Uh, any discussion on the amendment? Uh, let's roll call vote that amendment. Uh, Holt. Yes. Phillips. Yes. Nathan. Yes. Sarah. Yes. Phillips. Yes. Hansley. Yes. Bradford. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Any further discussion on the ordinance? Roll call vote. Holt. Yes. Maybe. Yes. Sarah. Yes. Ellen. Yes. Hansley. Yes. Fast. Yes. 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 No what number is this? 202101. <laughs> Our next ordinance is sponsored by Sarah Brown. Being enacted by the Quorum Court of the County of Van Buren, State of Arkansas, an appropriation ordinance to be entitled. An appropriation ordinance to transfer and appropriate monies back into the County General Fund from the County Road Fund. Whereas two row payrolls were paid out of the county judge's general budget for two employees and whereas these two payrolls should have been paid from the county road fund and whereas the following will need to be transferred and appropriated back to county general. 2000-200-1001 to 1000-100-1001 salaries dash full time. $4,162.06, $2,200, $1,006 to $1,100, $1,006 Social Security, $295.11, two hundred and eight to $1,100, $1,008, retirement, $571.60, totaling $5,000. $28.77. Now, therefore, be it ordained by the Foreign Court of Van Buren County, Arkansas, that $5,028.77 be transferred and appropriated to the County General Fund from the County Road Fund. Make a motion to approve it. I have a motion by Sarah Brown, a second by Mary Phillips to approve this ordinance. Discussion? Mm -hmm. so, all of Oh, yes. Maybe. Yes, Sarah. Yes, Sarah. Yes, Hansley. Yes, Bradford. Yes, Fast. Yes. Twenty twenty one oh two. Thank you. Uh, our next one is sponsored by Justice Hensley. We have enacted the Quorum Court of the County of Van Buren State of Arkansas an appropriation ordinance to be entitled an appropriation ordinance to amend the original appropriation ordinance 2020-42 to the annual operating budget for 2021 to increase the projected revenue and appropriate $669.04 into the Detention Center budget 1418. Whereas $100, $100 was donated to First Baptist Church to help with the Christmas meal for inmates, and whereas $100 should be appropriated into line item 1418-2005 food, and whereas $569.04 be reimbursed from the Van Buren County Sheriff's inmate commissary account for inmate supplies and whereas $569.04 should be appropriated into the line item 1,418-2009 inmate supplies. Now, therefore, it be ordained by the Quorum Court of Van Buren County, Arkansas, that a total of $669.04 be appropriated into the detention center budget as stated above. Do I have a motion to adopt this ordinance? I make a motion to adopt the ordinance. Second. Motion by Holt, second by Phillips to adopt this ordinance. Any discussion? Holt. Yes. Nikki. Yes. Sarah. Yes. Phillips. Yes. Hansley. Yes. Bradford. Yes. Hansley. Yes. Phillips. Yes. Tatum. Oh, not Tatum. Lenny. Yes. Fast. Yes. Uh, 
next ordinance is sponsored by Justice Nikki Brown. Being enacted by the Foreign Court of the County of Van Buren in the state of Arkansas, an appropriation ordinance to be entitled. An appropriation ordinance to amend the original appropriation ordinance number 2020-42, the annual operating budget for 2021, to increase the projected revenue and appropriate $15,579 into the courthouse annex budget number 1000-120. Whereas a loan was taken out for the heat and air units in the courthouse annex at First Service Bank, and whereas money will need to be appropriated so that the monthly payments can be made. Now, therefore, be it ordained by the former court of Adrian County, Arkansas, that a total of $15,579 be appropriated into the courthouse annex budget number 1000 120 as follows. 1,000-120-5003, no principal, $12,709. 1,000-120-5004, no interest, $2,870. I make a motion we adopt the order. Second. We have a motion by Nikki Brown and a second by Russell Hensley to adopt this ordinance. Any discussion? What would you call us uh, I don't even remember. Do you remember the payment? What was the question? What was the total cost of the system? Um, I've got down here loan amount seventy thousand three hundred two zero eight. <clears throat> Anyone else would like to jump on any committees? Just let me know. <laughs> certainly use anybody. Roll call vote. Holt? Yes. Nikki? Yes. Sarah? Yes. Phyllis? Yes. Hensley? Yes. Bradford? Yes. Lemmings? Yes. Bass? Yes. 2021 Thank you. Our next resolution is sponsored by Justice Phillips. <clears throat> Be it resolved by the former court of the county of Van Buren, state of Arkansas, a resolution to be entitled, a resolution authorizing a count, uh, D, county judge of Van Buren County and Van Buren County clerk to sign for a letter of credit in the amount of $11,000 with First Service Bank to be used for the transfer station. Whereas there is a need for a letter of credit for 11000 to be reestablished at First Service Bank of Clinton, Arkansas, and whereas these funds are to be readily accessible for use by the transfer station at the Van Buren County Solid Waste Management, uh, should the need arise, and whereas the term for this line of credit will be reoccurring through the year 2025 and will be in effect with the signing of the letter of credit. Therefore, be it resolved by the Quorum Court of Van Buren County, Arkansas, that the county judge and the Van Buren County clerk is hereby authorized uh, to sign for a letter of credit in the amount of 11000 to be used by the transfer station when and if there is a need for the use of post-closure expenses. This line of credit will be reoccurring through the year 2025. I move that we adopt this resolution. Second. We have a motion by Phillips to adopt. A second by Justice Holt. 
any discussion and I'll give you just a little bit of clarification here we're required by state code to either have a an amount of money set back or a line of credit should the uh, solid waste facility should the transfer station club be forced into a closure and that is to properly clean up the uh, make sure the funds are available to properly clean the area up so it's not a hazard should that ever happen any other discussion hello oh, yes Maybe. Yes. Sarah. Yes. Phyllis. Yes. 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 Y
works a year accident free. We'll see that decrease even farther. And then two years will decrease even more. And three years will decrease even more. And we can reward our employees for that. We had two clients last year. It's so it's very achievable for you guys to make it your accident. Mm -hmm. And two claims for a sheriff's department. Mm -hmm. We are pretty, pretty low. Mm -hmm. um, so is this a, just a one-time thing? Um, Hopefully we'll get to do it again. I mean, year. I hope you get to do yes. it again, but are we just voting for this one time? Yes. Okay. yes. Yeah, you're, you're not voting. You're not going to do it every month. or <laughs> Just making sure. Budget committee on her. We're looking at other county offices. That's what Mary was saying. It has to be a dangerous. Well, they could all be out there. I mean, they don't have to be in this office. If they want to talk to you on the road, they could. Yeah, they're both in danger. Yeah, and they can't apply. Well, well I mean, the officer said clear that this was in the budget that you had proposed for last year that had went through. So if another department was going to do that, they would need to look at it in advance like Lucas is and, and reflect that in a proposed budget. What's the amount of money we're looking at? 26 full-time employees, I think, at 500, that's 13, plus uh, five part-time. So, a little $14,000. Per, per person, per person, for all of For the road park. For the road park, 500 for road park. per employee and 250 for part-time. And it's already in his budget. It's not an overage, is what I'm understanding. Right, right. <clears throat> County judges raised the bar and I got reached. The challenge is there. It's a challenge. <laughs> but you know, we don't, just thinking out of the box, it doesn't have to stop at you know, workplace injuries. It could also, incentivize. we could also incentivize uh, lower uh, health care premiums. You know, just going forward, just thinking. Any other discussion? All of Yes. Sarah Brown is second by Justice Phillips. Any discussion? Roll call vote on suspension. Sorry. That was not Yes. 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 We have a motion to approve by Phillips and a second by Nikki Brown to approve the transfers. Any discussion? All those in favor of approving the transfers, signify saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Before we adjourn, I would like to uh, show you the uh, plaque that has been given to the Denver County Road Department. And uh, the superintendent's here. Would you like to come and accept this on behalf of the road crew?
Any opposed?